And good, good morning and welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, affectionately known for almost 40 years now, if you can believe that. I'm officially and unapologetic, unapologetically a senior. Yes, I am, and I'm just delighted to be able to uh, have as my next guest today, along with the commitment to bring you relevant and current topics, resources, and guests. And today is no exception. I have as my guest for the next hour, uh, Don Graves, who's headquartered uh, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he's the CEO of the Housing Wealth Institute. Uh, he spent over 20 years or more in the whole area of housing wealth as a part of your retirement agenda, uh, what it looks like, how to prepare for it, and where we go next. And he brings all of the background and the information and the expertise that you are going to want as we talk about transitioning into retirement. It's, it's a new world right now, and a lot's going on, but I think on a more personal note, 10,000 baby boomers are leaving the market every single day throughout the United States. The global impact is significant, but within our own country, change is here. And I thought it was appropriate to bring him on to share his thoughts and recommendations and um, resources on this very significant subject. So without further ado, allow me to introduce to you uh, my guest for the next hour, Don Graves, who is CEO of the Housing Wealth Institute in Philadelphia. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Michelle Graves. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted that you're coming on and um, looking forward to us talking very openly about what is going on in the landscape of retirement today. Um, let's deal with really the major challenges of retirement and what are some of the things that people need to know about as they go down that road called the final phase in my life, and in many cases, the beginning of a new life. So yeah. let's, let us begin. The, the, you know, this idea of retirement is fairly modern. Most people have not realized this. The, the idea that we're gonna um, save up a lot of money and then live off of that and, and, and cease to do activity is a fairly modern concept, really. Hmm. Um, Tell me more. Well, think about um, your parent, your grandparent. There was not an idea of retirement. You worked as long as you could, and with life expectancy being in its 60s and creeping up the 70s, you worked until you died. And so That's the true. idea is that um, this concept is I'm going to work and then spend the next 10, 20, 30 years um, ceasing from labor is a modern concept, really post-World War II and beyond. Um, so most people work and then you die. That's what happened. So now to think, well, wait a minute, I'm going to live in retirement 10, 20, 30, maybe 40 years. I had a 104-year-old person call my office. She retired at 62. Oh, my 42, goodness. 42 years in retirement. Most people have not planned for that. So when we think of the retirement as the idea that I'm going to cease from meaningful um, labor that's generating income, and I'm going to live off of some bucket, and that's going to last me the rest of my life, and provide me with enough money to have a lifestyle that I enjoy to maintain purchasing power, that's a modern concept. Now, if that's our definition of retirement, then there's some things that we have to consider. And I wanna to talk to you about what that looks like when you talk about things that we have to consider because certainly I myself at 72 never ever thought, not in my wildest dreams, that people would be uh, reinvigorated. It seems to be on both sides. There are people that are, again, reinvigorated and excited about 
uh, this phase in their life, not having to deal with parenting, sort of, <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, workplace. And now they have the freedom to choose what works best for them if they can keep their health in order and if yeah. they have yeah. the financial resources. That, that, that's everything. So you talk more about that, please. Well, retirement for most people is going to last longer than they expect. Correct. Be more expensive than they imagine and less predictable than ever. I asked someone, I said to them, they said to me, I, I, I'm going to, I'm pretty sure I'll be okay in retirement. And I said, okay. Um, now, I appreciate your confidence. Let me ask you a question. I said, where were you all, the couple? said, where were you on 2 2 20? They said, 2 2 20. What is that? I said, February 2nd, the year 2020. Where were you at that day? Do you remember? They said, no. I said, it was, it was a Sunday. Does that help? They said, no. I said, well, I was across the street at my neighbor's house watching the Super Bowl Sunday afternoon. And at halftime, I'm going to run up here to Walgreens and get some snack. And I said to them, not a single person that day said to me as I'm going to get some snack, hey, while you're out at Walgreens, why don't you get about two or 300 rolls of toilet paper? Because in six weeks, the world will be very different. Not a single person said that to me. I said, because if they had said that, I would have said to them, what do you think is going to happen in six weeks? that I would need 300 rolls of toilet paper. Well, we know what happened. <laughs> yes. February 2nd, 2020, six weeks later, around March 17th, my son's college dormitory had shut down because of COVID, and they sent him packing at home. My grandbabies, who were living with me at the time, their daycare shut down. And now my living room, dining room, kitchen was the daycare, and my wife was at Costco fighting for toilet paper. Whoa. So when someone says to me, I'm pretty sure I'll be okay. I said, you don't know what's going to happen the next six weeks, let alone the next six years. And because of this unpredictability in the world, what does it mean for us to have some preparation? I, I love the, the book of life says this. It says the wise see the danger that's coming yes. and prepares themselves. But the simple run headlong and are destroyed. That, that there's information that comes to both people, but only one took actionable steps for that. So retirement, longer than um, going to be expected, more expensive, and less predictable. And so when we think of that, there's some deliberate steps we need to take to be prepared and to be wise. If And, and if we're in it, how do we manage? Well, I think it's interesting that you, you put it in that way because it's going to take an incredible, incredible amount of um, planning and wisdom. And, and, and sorrowfully, Don, I don't mm -hmm. think the average American is prepared for what this is going to look like, particularly given the statistics that speak very uh, crisply regarding women in retirement, particularly um, widows, women that don't have much to live on. That's the economic side. But then on mm -hmm. the other side is a, a lack of attentiveness to your health and your well-being. That uh, even with good days, the reality is that your body is older and it's not going to do what it could do when you were younger, despite what any of the great athletes have said, aging is a reality for the body. So how does a person wisely, from your experience, working with people in homes and home ownership and lifestyles, how are people getting through? There there's a um, lifespan, how long you're going to live, and then there's health span, and which is, there are things that are operating in our bodies that are frightening. 
in ticking yep. time bomb. Every one of them. No, no one. Yeah. Listen, three, three out of three die. No one gets out of here alive. <laughs> I want to go out well, and but we don't know. How many of you, your viewers, know someone that was here last year doing fine, and now they're not. And there was no rhyme or reason, but someone who smoked 40 packs a day is alive still at 100. There's, there's sometimes no, no rhyme or reason. We can do the things to be good stewards of our uh, economic life, our emotional life, uh, our physical life, to be good stewards, to do the things that we know we should do. But other than that, we've got to trust our life into the care of someone other than ourselves because we simply don't know. But today, um, there are some things we can do, um, take the assets we have, and how do we make the best or the most out of those things? And that's about retirement. Going to last longer, be more expensive, and less predictable. How do we manage it? Well, I must say from my own personal um, view, despite what my children may believe, Don, I don't have any um, reason to contemplate retirement. I am enjoying my very best years. I am enjoying um, doing things that I didn't have opportunity to do when I was younger. I have projects I'm involved in and while our young people are bursting with energy and imagination, I am the, the, the lady on the side that's taking inventory and looking at how things can be executed to completion because when you're young, you don't think about the finish line. You're, you're in the process. So the whole notion for me of retirement, and I don't think I'm by myself because all of my friends, my close circle of friends, they are, they're busily doing what makes them incredibly happy. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and it could be viewed as a job without pay but it's still what makes them happy. And so um, that's the whole change, you know, mm -hmm. about just continuing. There is no conversation about retiring because I'm not. I guess I'll just sail off in the sunset somewhere. <laughs> what are your thoughts? When we think about retirement, now I'm 58. And yes. I don't know how this happened. I don't know how I got here. But I've got a daughter of 30. That life, life comes fast. He doesn't. And it? in my world and what I do, the, the college I teach at, my business is how do we help people to take what they have and to make that a sustainable retirement? Some have more than others. I, I'm a late bloomer. I'm playing catch up. Right. And, um, and then there are things that come that none of us are prepared for. Let me share with your listeners. I, I'm going to encourage them to grab a, a pen or paper, um, your listeners, and I want them to draw some. I'm going to draw it out here, Michelle, and hold it up to the screen. Okay. But for your viewers or listeners, I want you to draw something that looks like a dollar bill and put a circle in the middle and connect it so you have five kind of buckets like that. And I'm going to write in here some words, some letters, L-O, L-F, L-Q, L-G, and L-T. Let me hold that up again. Gotcha. It says L-O, L-F, L-Q, L-G, L-T. So I encourage your, your listeners again to, to draw something that looks like a dollar bill and put a circle in the middle of it. And let's talk about the five major concerns in retirement. The five major concerns in retirement. And I want to unpack them because they're, uh, they're universal. They're universal. So the first concern in the first box, LO, stands for longevity. Longevity. How long will my retirement nest egg last? Now, some people say, Don, I don't have a nest egg. Well, that would that would be a zero <laughs> for you. <laughs> Not funny. But, but here, here's the question. Here's the question, viewer. How long will your retirement nest egg last? That's the LO. That's what people are concerned about. Will I run out of savings in retirement? 
you'll probably not run out of money because you'll have Social Security. But Social Security was designed in 1935 to cover about 35% of your retirement income. That was its intention. And for many people, it's covering 80, 90, 100% of yes, your retirement income. Yes, so, it is. So let me, so here's what I want you to do, the, the viewer. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much does the thought of running out of savings in retirement trouble you? One, it doesn't trouble me at all, Don. Ten, I can't sleep at night. (laughs) You put a number, I want you to put a number right in there for LO on a scale of one to ten. And because running out of savings um, happened, I had a lady yesterday, um, a distinguished attorney, her husband was MIT grad, they both went to Harvard Law, and a wonderful practice. Now, he developed bone marrow cancer, oh. and she's been caring for He died Sunday. He died, oh. died two days before this recording. And what she told me is that they all the money they had saved up, and they were right in Indiana, all the money they had um, was gone. They had saved, but this health crisis wiped it out. She says, now, Don, I've got two things left. I've got my home and I've got my husband's oil paint. And so this idea that um, on a scale of one to 10, how how bothered would you be? How troubled uh, the thought of running out of savings in retirement? How much does that trouble you? One, not at all, 10, I'm, I'm scared to death. Question number two, question number two is this LF. LF stands for lifestyle, lifestyle. There's some things I wanted to do places I wanted to go, restaurants I wanted to eat, uh, where I wanted to live. The retirement that I had imagined at 45 or 35. So here's the question, lifestyle. On a scale of one to 10, how bothered would you be if you had to cut back your lifestyle in order to make your retirement savings last? One, I wouldn't be bothered by that at all, Don. Ten, oh my gosh, I'd cry. I'd cry. If I had to move <laughs> into a little tiny house or an efficiency apartment, it'd be troubling. Now, I've learned to live a lot of places, but that's lifestyle. Where you wanted to go, what you wanted to do, where'd you want to eat? I like I like eating. I like eating, can't you tell? The third concern, <laughs> the third concern is uh, LQ down here at the bottom, here over here. LQ stands for liquidity. Having money, access to money when I need it. Now, Michelle, I think you can speak to this LQ because um, if someone needs a hearing aid in retirement, those things get expensive. I've, I've seen some six, seven, eight thousand dollars. Right. If someone has really tough dental work and maybe they need ten thousand dollars worth of work, what you have may not cover that. They're spending shocks. Liquidity means um, the tree fell. And the insurance company covered it, this is my neighbor across the street, covered it to get it off the house, but they didn't cover it to remove the tree. She had to get people to come in and cut it up and re- that was $8,000. So liquidity, liquidity in retirement, and which is on a scale of one to 10, here's the third, how prepared are you? If you had to access another ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, how prepared are you to do that? Well, One, can I, Don, can, I'm in time. Can I interrupt uh-huh. on that note just quickly? Yes, a thought that mm-hmm. just kind of ran through my mind was on this subject of liquidity in retirement, and when you have deferred your dreams and hopes in terms of maintaining a family, taking care of your children, college. All of this deferred gratification that Mm -hmm. becomes so significant because, believe it or not, as we grow older, Don, we become Mm -hmm. more and more aware of longevity issues and I may be dead. I may not get to go on these different um, excursions and, and, and trips and do these things because I may have health issues 
which come from nowhere, or I may not, God forbid, even be alive. Mm -hmm. That's how quickly change comes no matter how well you prepare for it in retirement. So the issue of, of will I have enough money? Can mm -hmm. I fulfill my dreams? Will I have the liquidity I need to anticipate unexpected? Because we don't know. Continue. Mm -hmm. Sure. So the question is on a scale of one to 10, how prepared would you be if you had to access another Ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, and that's that's ready cash. That's not money right, that you're right. gonna have to pay taxes on if right. you pulled it from here. Um, one, I'm entirely prepared. Ten, I'm not prepared at all. Now, the last G, uh, LG and LT. LG stands for legacy. Uh, how will I be financially remembered? Legacy. Now, I have three children, and. Over the years, I, I happen to have three homes, a, a rental property that got them cheap years ago. And I'd like to leave those three homes, Michelle, to my three children. But they also know, don't be circling the carcass waiting for dad to die, thinking you're going to get some. <laughs> because <laughs> Not I, paid for you to go to, I paid for you to go to private high school. And... Um, I paid for you to go to college, so you didn't have to come out burdened down with debt. And uh, you got a little bit, but you're not burdened down. And if I need that money for my own care, my own enjoyment, um, I'm going to use it. And they know that. Now, I'd like to leave them something, but um, now, some people say, Don, that's terrible. That, well, no, no, my, my kids didn't have to live in squalor or poverty or or be, go to gun metal detectors in high school that I was blessed to be able to, to do some things. So I don't, I'm not from the school that says I owe them anything. That's not, you'd be mad at me if you want to. Now you may be. So here's, here's the fourth. Uh, we talked about longevity. How long yep. are my savings like? Right. Lifestyle. And I enjoy it. Three, liquidity. Do I have dollars available when things come up? Number four, legacy. On a scale of one to 10, how important is it for you the viewer to leave a financial legacy to your children or grandchildren. Um, 10, Don, it's everything. I'll sell my house, move the skid row, eat cat food that they can have some. Or one, eh, they'll be okay. <laughs> and so, now most people, when they're honest, they want to say one, but the, the, yeah. the number one answer, like Family Feud, the number one answer is, um, Two, two, that is, we love our children, but we've done for them. And most people understand, they've seen somebody in retirement, 80, 90 mm -hmm. years old, that struggled, and they did for their children. But now their children aren't doing for them. Now, hopefully that's no one's situation. Now, the fifth and final one of the five major concerns in retirement, LT. Stands for long-term care, long-term care. The out-of-pocket yes. costs associated with getting older. Now, that's the biggest overlooked and underplanned for expense in retirement. Fidelity Investments every year releases a study that says, what can the average 65-year-old couple expect to pay out-of-pocket for health care costs? That doesn't include um, long-term care costs. That's just health care costs. That's $300,000 this last $300,000. And so when we think about that 70% of retired couples, someone is going to need some sort of long-term care. Now, this hit personal for me. Uh, my sweet mama is 91 years of age. She is the smartest, sweetest person I have known, and she's still with us. But at age 85, um, her dementia got to a point where yeah. she needed home health care. Now, that was uh, around $7,000 per month. That's not a small amount. Right. And, and they began to do that. My family, my one sister quit her job. My other sister reduced her hours. And, and we squeezed three years out of that turnip, $252,000 until the money was gone. And so the hardest decision the family had to make was um, what's going to be best for mama? And that was the memory care. 
facility. And she's there, she's well, she's fine, but that was difficult. And we had a plan. For 252, we have a plan. Now, here's the final question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how prepared are you if you had to access another two, three, four hundred thousand dollars out of pocket for health care costs? One, Don, I'm entirely prepared for that. Ten, not at all. I'm not right. prepared at all for that. And so when we're looking at retirement, those five major concerns here, mm-hmm. longevity, lifestyle, liquidity, legacy, long-term care, um, we've got to answer those questions. We have can to I, face the reality of it, okay. and then we have to develop a plan. Well, can I speak to that? I, that's a very, what, what you have said is very powerful, very powerful, because I would have to say from my own private practice, this has been one of the most frustrating things about counseling seniors and people that are moving into retirement. And a lot of that has to deal with, as I said, frozen in time, which is that they actually believe that they're in their 30s and 40s, period. Um, and I can go into all kinds of, of experiences and, and, and representations, but the key, the key component that you said about this long-term care, that things begin to happen a body is not like a car. You cannot replace, you may be able to replace a, an alternator in your vehicle, but it's not so simple in a human body. And I think that so many of our seniors, when I even bring it up, and I always do, they just brush it off as, well, if it comes to that, my kids will take care of me. And, and my response, Don, is, has there been any indication from past behavior <laughs> that your kids are going to take care of you? Um, and are you prepared to address that? Can they deal with the financial burden? Because it is a financial burden. It's no question about it. And they're raising their children. They're dealing with their households. And you really don't fit in the program. And I know that's so painful for so many people to anticipate, but it is so truthful. And particularly with this generation we're facing today, talking about cat food, I'm just keeping it real. I think they'll do it. But we're not here to disparage young people because that's a whole nother show but as it relates to us as seniors and aging population groups, this is extremely relevant and powerful. And I appreciate your summarizing those points because again, most people do not look at those within that context. And when life changes and they find themselves being ill-prepared, then what do you do? Or as I told one, one woman, and I was at odds with my manager because she had a pocket of money and, and I was definitely not going to follow a strategy of putting it all way out in the future because I believe she's going to need it to live mm-hmm. on shortly. That's my mm-hmm. take. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts? Sure. And we have to be sober money lady that coming into retirement again gonna last longer be more expensive and less predictable than we ever imagined i got thinking um i sometimes i ask the question to the audience i said what's the first gasoline price you can remember as a child that's something that's stuck in your mind the price of gas can you remember that michelle 25 cent a gallon Clark. I remember, I remember 20, as a child, 25 uh, 29, 29, nine, 29. Yeah, nine. mine was 25. And uh, somewhere in my mind, my dad is screaming about 29, nine. He can't believe gas was going up to 29, nine. 
and he's going to drive down to Clark's yes. 13 miles away to get <laughs> gas <laughs> going up here to the local place because Clark, Clark is 23.9 or something. Right. It's like, and even as a child, I thought, see, man, you're going to burn up all that gas. gas to... <laughs> but, but he was going to go down to Clark in uh, 29 nine. And I think about it, that's in my lifetime. I remember yes. 29 nine. And I think I was talking to you the other day that you said gas prices had fluctuated within 24 hours in, in Cincinnati where you were at the time. Yes. You said yesterday they were this price and I came back and they were 50 cents. It was something ridiculous. It was number. ridiculous and it stayed. It's $3 said, no it it, it as we speak. And you said it did. It did. And I actually saw an article, I heard someone comment on that. And so you think about that. You think about what the future is going to be like. And so, so what do we do? What do we do when we're looking at a future that um, has some uncertainty to it? I, I thought about, I was reading on the, the uh, RSS Titanic out of uh, Britain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Titanic that sank in 1912. And I think it was. And I, I thought, well, that's, that's a way that we approach risk in retirement, the things, oh, the uncertain. Right. That when you think about it, you, there, you had four choices if on that Titanic. The Titanic had, um, some people say it didn't have enough lifeboats. No, it actually had more lifeboats than were required by law. It had 20 lifeboats, but that law was five years old. And that law was for boats. The Titanic was five times the size of the boats when that law was passed. Yes. So they could say, but but the, the safety folks said, no, you need more. And the crew and captain says, well, we could put more, but it's going to obstruct the view. You hear me? <laughs> yes. And so they, and, and, and by the way, the, this thing is a modern boat. We've got new tech. It, even if it did hit something, it won't sink. And because we've got this technology. Now, knowing that, as you face risk in retirement, listen to me, viewers. There, there, there are four ways to do that. Number one, you can, you can just board the ship. You, you know the possibility. You know. And you say, I'll just board the ship. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I'll, right. I'll roll the dice with right. my retirement. Right. Bro. Uh, number two, you could... Um, you could buy a lifeboat. Maybe there's someone there saying, hey, we got portable lifeboats for sale here. You're going on that deal. And you may say, well, no, I don't want, I don't want to spend the money. What if I don't use it now? I spent this money to get this insurance, this personal lifeboat, and that you could do that. Number three, you could cancel your trip. You could say, you know what? Um, I'm just not going. I'll cut back, and I wanted to have this type of retirement, this Titanic lifestyle, but no, nah, I'll, I'll just uh, bite the bullet, I'll, I'll, I'll cut back. Or number four, you can just wait and watch. And that's what a lot of people do. The, the whistle sounds, people say, all aboard, you're getting on board, and you, you're deer in the headlights. You can't make a decision. You don't know which way to go. And listen, folks, indecision is decision. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it I, is. I grew up in uh, where I lived. I lived next to a train track. And I, I discovered early in life um, the easiest way to get run over by a train is lay on the tracks and do nothing. <laughs> You're in the city. The train is coming. It's coming. It's coming train, all day long. You know? The I don't train have to make is a coming. I just, I just lay there and do nothing. And so in retirement, um, we're, we're looking at things and, oh gosh, am I going to make it? Do I have enough? And I'm paralyzed. And, but sometimes we have resources. And we do have resources. We, most people, not everybody, but most people have uh, three major buckets in retirement. And this is my world. So we're transitioning into what I do, housing wealth. And so um, I tell the story. And, and Michelle, you had a grandson, I believe, that played football, used to play football. And mm -hmm. there were your hometown. I know your children are just Bengals fans, Bengals fans. And I tell the story about the... Um, I said, do you remember the Cincinnati Bengals team? I tell this to a crowd. In 1972, they went to the Super Bowl. They had a perfect record. 
Now, normally there are 11 men that take the football field on offense and defense, but here at the Super Bowl, the Cincinnati Bengals are so confident that they put 10 men on the field. And when it was time for defense, they put 10 men, not for one play, but for the whole game. They only played 10 men each side for the Super Bowl. And I say to the audience, you all remember that? And people say, no, because it didn't happen. <laughs> There's not a single football team, no matter how good you are, that you're not going to put all your available assets in play right. when it comes down to the biggest game of your life. There's not a baseball team that's not going to put nine men on the field when it comes time. <laughs> no one, There's not a basketball team that's not going to put five people. I don't care how good you are. I said, now think about that. You've never heard that story because there's no one that says, I'm not going to use all my assets at my disposal for something this important. But that's but, what we do in retirement. But can See, I interrupt? Got, can I interrupt mm -hmm. real quickly? Mm -hmm. That is a logical, balanced perspective. However, I have to speak to the fact that so many people, when they get emotional and begin to look at their life and what they did and did not accomplish, and here we are because it comes fast, like woof, mm -hmm. and the emotional, and I need you to talk to, about this because mm -hmm. the, the emotional triggers viewers and Don will paralyze you. You will be in the vast wasteland of undecision and fear. And, and this points directly to what you do as an advisor on housing wealth. It is the emotional intelligence mm -hmm. that gets muddied where decision making, and we can talk for hours on this, where people develop paralysis because of their emotions that make it impossible to do anything. Would you make right. sure you talk about that? Because that's sure. important. And, and it, it's standing there at the Titanic. Yep. And, and saying, do, do I want to take a risk, do I want to buy a lifeboat, do I want to cancel the trip? And indecision has you paralyzed. There's an emotional impact of this. And so we're going to talk about the, the, the psychological phases of retirement as well as the economic phases here in a moment. But let me finish this idea that okay. um, people that most people have three buckets in retirement. Again, not always. You've got your income bucket, Social Security, retirees, Social Security, pension if you're lucky, Employment, if you're eight, that's your income bucket. Your next bucket is your investment bucket. Not everybody has that, but that includes your um, IRAs, your 401ks, your brokerage accounts, your mutual funds, your checking and saving, things of that nature, things that you could sell. Your third bucket is your insurance bucket, fixed and variable annuities, whole and term life, disability insurance, long-term care. So those three buckets you're, you're going to live on, you're going to maneuver and manipulate. But is that enough? See, the, the, the 11th man I talked about in the football metaphor, the ninth man in baseball or fifth man in basketball, is that that's not all of your available assets. Most people, 87%, 87% of people have a house. They own a home. You put housing wealth on the field, that now we got things that work as a team. If you have, that's where I come in to say, how can housing wealth be part of the team? Not, not the, not the standalone, but, but part of the team that helps us to win the championship called retirement. And that's what I help walk people through. Now, there's retirement is difficult in, in a lot of ways because we don't know what we don't know. Dr. Riley um, Moynes, M-O-Y-N-E-S, M-O-Y-N-E-S, did a wonderful talk um, called The Four Psychological Phases of Retirement, the TED Talk. And I sent it to you, Michelle. I've watched it three, four, five times. Mm -hmm. I sent it there five because I thought it was absolutely stunning and mm -hmm. wonderful. 
He talks about the four phases of retirement. Phase one is the vacation phase. Hey, I don't have to punch the clock. I don't have to work for the man. I don't have to go to the hospital. Whatever you do, it's a vacation. Every day, every day is a weekend. And I come and go as I please. I do as I want. Oh, this is, this is wonderful. But he talks about, but that runs out. And that, you realize, you know what, I, I kind of like people. I, I like having something to do. And that gives way from the vacation stage to the loss phase where, well, who am I? Um, and that's why many people, and you see this with a lot of um, coaches. The coach finally retires from the university. Mm -hmm. And what do you hear a year later? He's dead. Yep. He's dead. And um, because there's a loss state, there, there's identity loss and, and there are all these things. And that gives way to phase number three with the, what he calls experimentation. Well, you know what? I'm going to try this. I always wanted to try line dancing. I, I'm going to try this. I always wanted to do this. Or I'm going to try this. And what he calls experimentation. And then the fourth and final phase is what's called fulfillment or reward. Whereas, um, and my friend calls it not retirement, but refirement at that fourth phase where you have found something that has you fired up again, mm -hmm. full of life, vim, vigor, purpose. And that's what you're, that's your second act. That's what you're going out on. Right. And those four phases that people go through in retirement have to be paid for. <laughs> and so that's the emotional phases of retirement. But there's the economic fee that it costs money to experiment. It costs money to find a new purpose. It, and so the economic phases of retirement, how are you going to fund these things? So that's where your buckets come in. Your income bucket, your investment bucket, your insurance bucket, and absolutely, unequivocally, your housing wealth bucket in retirement. Particularly, we're speaking of the modern reverse mortgage. That's what I do. I'm coming into my 25th year. Can you believe it? I It'd can't be 25 years at the end of this year. Um, wow. The, the modern reverse mortgage. And now that's where some people, some viewers on the show, just went like this. <gasps> they said, oh, last time I mentioned that reverse mortgage, I remember I was at a barbecue. And someone said, what about a reverse mortgage for mama? And three people went under the table and three people left the table. And my Aunt Janie made a shank out of a plastic knife and fork and tried to kill my cousin. <laughs> it's just dangerous to mention reverse mortgages. And I just remind folks, listen, it's four, it's four words, people. I-J-A-M. I-J-A-M. It's just a mortgage. It's just a mortgage. Don't make it spooky. It's just a mortgage. It's a home equity loan for a retiree, age 62 or better, that allows them to borrow money, like any home equity loan or line of credit, from their home without giving up ownership, coming off title, having to make any monthly payments, having to leave the home if you spent all the money, or even having to owe more than the home is worth if you're upside down at the end. Folks, it's just a mortgage. And it's not spooky. Don, how long has it been around? 1961. Yeah. yeah. Folks, 1961. It's been part of our federal government since 1988 at the seating of the 100th Congress and the signing by Ronald Reagan, the reverse mortgage, 1988. So that's 30, what's that, 34, 35, mm -hmm. more than that, 36 years ago. Yep. So it's yep. not new. It's not dangerous. It's not spooky. What it is, is it's your fourth bucket. It's the one that makes sure you get all your assets working together for you. And I encourage people, um, you should learn about it. I, I teach a master class. I don't know if I can tell you where to go to get that education mm -hmm. here, but, and, uh, but you can go to www.housingwealthmasterclass.com, housingwealthmasterclass. Dot com. That's me. That's educational, about 47 minutes. And I cover everything for you. It's not a sales pitch. It's education I teach for college. And so you can get there. But, but Michelle, when you, when you watch that video on the psychological phases, the vacation loss, experimentation, and reward, 
the two questions for you. What did you think watching Dr. Moynes? And two, where are you at in well, your emotional journey? Well, I, I will be candid with you. I don't think I'm atypical in my perspective. Uh, this came fast. It, it came fast. It, when, when your children now refer to you as old, like mm -hmm. you have all kinds of images of what that looks like, based upon media, based upon your personal observations, Don, not everybody gets old gracefully. Mm -hmm. Not everybody retains their physical um, abilities and, and their beauty and their masculine. A lot of people, when they cross into their 60s, begin to see things that are like, whoa, no. And they begin to try to grasp uh, what does this all mean? For me, it meant a single woman in her older years and with no husband and no desire at this point for that type of an experience because I've already done it. So I'm looking for something different. But you also go uh, into a really serious um, emotional flashback where you begin to look at things very differently. Uh, for me, at this point in my life, the refiring looks like family. Good, bad, ugly, doesn't matter. Them, th those are mine. Those are my mm -hmm. people. Those are the people that I have shared a large portion of my life with or through or because of. And again, when you get older, I think that it's less and less of an issue of wealth as it is family. And of course, that varies for different people, but I do know that as you get closer and closer to your own mortality, those things become more important and precious. I had my grandsons with me uh, this weekend, and uh, along with their Tonka trucks, along with them violating and being in my bed and jumping around and just doing what boys do. And you know what? I didn't care. I was jumping up and down with them because it was fun. And there were things that didn't happen that I want to happen now. But in the back of my mind is the recurrent uh, concern that I have about my health and physical well-being. But the difference is that I know what I need to do, so I'm getting ready to get back into the gym and do personal, rigorous personal training to make sure that I uh, am as fit as I can be. Now, there are a lot of things I can't change, and I'm at peace with that. There are people that I can't change. I'm okay with that. I'm about what can I do to make a difference in my life and how I deal with people. Mm -hmm. And you are so correct. Money, as the Bible says, answers all things. And the absence of money eliminates most things. So the challenge is, for older people, what do you have in your pocket mm -hmm. that you can leverage so that you can do some things. And so I hear you loud and clear, the reverse mortgage. I don't care what anybody's opinion is because poverty sucks. And when you don't have resources and reserves and you're counting on these emotional connections to pay mm -hmm. your bills, well, not in America. I, I don't, I no, not, not in America. You've got to, to lay a plan in place. And if you're blessed to have a home, you need to leverage that home. It's, it's not about the kids getting your home. You worked hard for that home. You need to use your home to facilitate your refiring 
in the latter parts of your life. That's my personal opinion. I'm not being paid for this promotion. I'm just telling you how I see it. Your thoughts? No, absolutely. And um, I heard Red Fox once say uh, that money's not the most important thing. <laughs> but, but it is up there with oxygen. It's up there with oxygen. <laughs> I know. Uh, so can we? To, can we we've move? Got to play the hand, we've got to play the hand we're, we're dealt. Correct. And everyone doesn't get the same hand. I, I find myself, um, you know, I'm playing catch up. In the, and again, my, my mother's scenario made me consider my health and what I was going to be doing and what I, possible burden I could leave my wife or children. And it made me think differently. And so retirement's going to be longer than expected, more expensive than imagined, and less predictable. How do we navigate? We navigate right. it with the tools that we have. I don't know what you have. You've got income, Social Security. You've got maybe some investments, maybe some insurances, maybe some housing loan. Whatever the hand you have, learn how to play it effectively. And um, certainly my world is, I think, reverse mortgages work. Um, for the right people in the right circumstances, and they don't work for other folks. You can go to Housing Wealth Pro, I'm sorry, Housing Wealth Masterclass.com and get information yourself. Housing Wealth Masterclass. I think that's so. If I might say, in the in the limited time we have left, this conversation with you has been um, very, very powerful for me because it has enabled me to crystallize the, the days and the steps I need to have in place for my own. And I, I just, my concern is deep and great that many of my generation will not be well prepared and will experience some hard, hard things. And I, I, don't, I don't have a, a clean solution, but quickly, in the time remaining, let's give the common uses. What can a reverse mortgage do for seniors right now? Right now, if they qualify. Right now, 68% uh, of retirees are carrying some sort of loan payment into retirement. So okay. the first thing it can do is turn your mandatory monthly mortgage payment, loan payment, into a voluntary one or eliminate it altogether. What would retirement be like if you didn't have to make a monthly principal and interest payment? That Powerful. gives you a lot of flexibility. That's the most common use of number two. Um, it provides a reserve. You set up a reverse mortgage line of credit, just like a home equity line of credit. Now you've got a bucket of money here accessible to you for emergencies, expenses, or enjoyment, use it wisely, that come up. So you've got a growing line of credit that's able to supplement your income, provide when things come up and spending shocks, um, or just to be a comfort knowing I've got a few shekels over here. I got a few dollars that I can access when I need it. So those are the two most common uses. Eliminate a monthly mortgage payment, six, 8% of the time. That's what we're doing. Set up a reserve that can replace income, replenish income, um, help you in spending shocks. Now and there are other advanced strategies and I won't go into all of those, but those two right there are, um, Excellent and essential. I agree. Can you give, if they want to speak to you directly, Don, can you mm -hmm. provide for my viewers a telephone number? Sure. Um, you can call our 1 800 number, 1 800 762 6315. That's 1 800 762 6315. You can go there and um, or again, you can you can email me at askdongraves at gmail.com. Askdongraves at gmail.com. But, but a way for a lot of folks, if they're able to get an introduction without having to talk to me, is just watch my master class, the Housing Wealth Master Class, um, www.housingwealthmasterclass.com. My information is, is over there too when you go. I appreciate the time you have given me to talk about the major challenges of retirement. The TED Talk that I watched four times 
uh, because it was just like Eureka. Oh, oh my God, I'm not crazy. Um, and that this is a reality for so many of us. And for those viewers who are watching the show, uh, I hope this is giving you real food for more than thought, but for action, pushing beyond fear, pushing beyond rejection, pushing beyond the emotional triggers that have created many of your challenges today. Can we push beyond that? and begin to recognize that this time in your life is so powerful and so precious, and you don't know when it's gonna end. So let's end on a great note, and in conclusion of today's Power of Money with your host, Michelle Graves, the money lady, 40 years. Can you believe it? But I thank you, and I also thank our guest today, Don Graves, who is truly a master at his craft. And uh, again, avail the resources that have been provided today. And I wish you an amazing and blessed day during these very, very challenging times. Take care of yourself, kiss the babies, grandbabies, and give a hug. It really means a lot. And I'll talk to you at another time. Thank you for being a part of my world. You take Thank care. You. Bye-bye.